You guys, this is really happening. Hold on. It's already happened. Know Me Patterns has dropped, baby. And guess what? I designed ME 2004. So go ahead and grab your copy, all right? So today, we're gonna be looking at the So Long for View A. Yes, View A, this lovely jacket. What I really love about this jacket is just the unique design of the peplum all the way around the jacket. But not only that, take a look at the inside, the lining. See if we got a clip of that lining inside. Hold on, right there, you see that? <laughs> That's me in that jacket, all right? See that lining? What I love about this pattern is that you can make the lining whatever you want, whatever style that you want, whatever print that you want, and it's gonna look good. Because when you zip that jacket down, baby, you can see all this, you can see that design. It's gonna look so good. The aesthetic is classy streetwear. As you can see, this is a like classy streetwear. So you, when you walking down the street, people are gonna be like, who is that? Where'd you get your outfit from? Oh, you made it? Okay. <laughs> Anyways, we're gonna go through this pattern. You're gonna love it. You're gonna love the so long, so stay tuned. So let's take a look at this pattern. We have view A, B, and C. And so we're gonna take a little closer look at the back so we can see what we need for this pattern. This is where you're gonna find the fabric suggestions and the amount of yards of fabric that you need. What's also great is that you can do this jacket in under two yards. Also, it shows you the notions, which we are gonna go over in just a minute. So the fabric I chose for the outside of my jacket was this faux suede. It is so soft, you guys, I am loving it. And for the lining, I chose this beautiful fall fabric. Like, how can you say this is not fall? Look at that orange right there. It's so beautiful. And then for my rib knit, I used a black rib knit. You're also going to need some grommets. I got this set off Amazon. I love this set. It has not failed me. It's pretty sturdy and it comes with everything and it lasts me a long time. I also have my hammer, which I'm going to need also. I also have my separating zipper and I have my bias tape. This is extra wide, double fold, and it is half inch wide. And I also have twill tape. This is what I'm gonna use as my ties around the jacket. And last but not least, lightweight fusible interfacing. All right, so now let's look at the pattern pieces. We got piece one and this is the front. You're gonna cut two of the fabric and two of the lining. Okay, so now this is piece two. This is the back and you're gonna cut two of the fabric and two of the lining. So now this is the collar, this is piece three. You're gonna cut two on the fold of the fabric and then one on the fold with interfacing. So this is piece four, this is the front peplum. You're gonna cut four of these with the fabric. This is piece five, this is the back peplum and you're gonna cut two of these on the fold. This is piece six, this is your sleeve, and you're going to cut two of these. Last but not least, this is piece seven, your sleeve band, and you're going to cut two of these with your contrast fabric, which is your rib knit. Okay, so now this is just a reminder to make all your markings, every single notch you wanna clip it, every single mark you wanna make a mark on your fabric with it, with a piece of chalk or even an erasable pen, just don't use anything permanent. So I'm gonna show you how I do my dark markings. So I basically put a pin where the point by the bust is and then I clip where the raw edges are. So I make my two clips right there. Then I flip the fabric over and make a mark with a piece of chalk for where I put the pin in. Then I would draw a line from the point that's near the bust all the way to the raw edge. And this is what it looks like. So after we've made all our marks, now we can get to sewing. First thing you're gonna do is stitch the dart in the front sections. I make my dart markings on the back of the pieces. So here I'm gonna go pin these together. You always start sewing the darts from the raw edge and following the line until you reach the point near the bust. 
So here's a trick I learned when sewing a dart. You're gonna start from the raw edge and you're just gonna keep sewing, keep sewing. But as soon as you get close to the end, close to the, the tip where the bust point is, you're gonna stop real quick and curve your needle towards that edge. See how close I got to the very edge, as close as you can get. And then you're gonna move your fabric just a little bit more. I raise my presser foot up just a little bit just to kind of help guide it. And then I'm just gonna sew at the very edge until I hit that point. Do not backstitch here. You're gonna pull out the fabric gently and then you're gonna tie at the very ends. You don't want to backstitch at all. And this actually helps prevent dimpling. Okay, so once you've sewn your darts, press it down with your iron. Do the same with your front lining sections. Take your back pieces and stitch them together at the center back, right sides facing. Also, when I use thicker fabric, I like to sew or serge the seams and darts down because sometimes pressing it doesn't allow it to lay as flat. Stitch the lining sections in the same way as the back pieces. Now I'm going to pin my front and back sections at the shoulder and side seams. Now stitch your shoulder and side seams together. Ooh, look at that, your jacket is basically done. <laughs> Just kidding. Now do the same for the lining pieces. And this is a reminder just to press your seams open after you've stitched your pieces together. Now stay stitched the neck edges of both the jacket and the lining. Now you're gonna pin the collar to the neck edge of the jacket, match your center backs and your dot markings at the shoulder seams. Stitch that together. Now for your other collar section, you wanna make sure you have fused to interfacing and you're gonna also stitch that one to the neck edge of the jacket lining. Take a moment to be proud of what you've done so far. Good job. Now you're gonna take the front and back peplum pieces and you're gonna stitch those together at the sides, matching the notches. For the remaining front and back peplum sections, stitch those in the same manner. Once you've done that, stay stitched the inner curved edge. Do that for both pieces. Now you're gonna pin the peplum to the lower edge of the jacket, right sides together, again, matching center backs, notches, and side seams. Clip the peplum to stay stitching as needed. And this part is really important because you wanna make sure that you are able to get the full peplum all the way from one side to the other. So once you are done pinning, you can start stitching. I usually like to start stitching from the center out so I don't run out of peplum to sew because that has happened many times before. <laughs> Now for the fun part, adding the 16 inch separating zipper. Now the instructions given in the pattern package is a great guide, but I know instructions for zippers can be confusing. So here's how I add zippers without fail every time. First, you wanna open and separate your zipper. I do not like to cut off the top of my zipper tape. I usually just like to place it at the top of the collar where the top stop would be about three quarters of an inch away from the top edge of the collar. This ensures that I have enough room to stitch around using the 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and so that I don't accidentally sew over the top stop. Have the zipper teeth also about three fourths of an inch away from the front opening edges. Pin the zipper down and baste it down. It might be necessary to move the needle on your sewing machine closer to the zipper so that you can stitch onto the zipper tape. Do the same for the other side of the zipper. Make sure your zipper opens and closes properly. Once done, take your lining piece. Because I'm working with a thicker fabric, I don't want my collar to be too bulky, so I stitch down the seam towards the top of the collar to hold it in place. I do the same for the peplum sections as well. I only do it for the lining so you don't have an unnecessary stitch on the outside of the jacket.
With the right sides together, now take both your lining section and jacket section and pin it together, matching seams and centers. So you're gonna see me pinning the top of the jacket and the lining together. Um, I only do this just to make sure that everything's matching, but you're not going to stitch those together just yet. You can just pin around the rest um, where the edges, the side edges and the peplum are, and then you can um, just take the pins off of the top later. See how I left it open? Yeah, don't sew it yet. Now you're gonna understitch the peplum facing as far as possible. So this is what it should look like. Make sure you're sewing on the side that has the lining. Now you can stitch the upper edge of the collar and facing together. This is also a good time to trim around the entire jacket so it's not as bulky. So now once you're done that, you're gonna turn the right sides out by pulling the jacket through one armhole opening. I like to use my nails to push out the corners of any of the peplum pieces or even the collar. Um, and also don't forget, this is actually a really good time to cut the corners of the collar so it's not as bulky. So snip, snip, there it goes. Also, it makes it so much easier to zip it up because sometimes if it's too bulky, your zipper might get stuck at the end there. Wow, this is starting to look fancy. Okay, so now you're going to match the lining and jacket armhole edges and then you're going to pin those together and then you're going to baste it. Now you're going to also edge stitch the back neck edges of the collar in order to not have the stitch showing on the neck collar. You can just stitch in the ditch. So now you're going to take your sleeve pieces and then you're going to ease stitch the sleeve between the notches. Once you're done, you don't want to cut your thread. You want to have a little bit of length to it just so you can adjust the ease. Stitch it one more time. And this is going to remind you of a gathering stitch. Now, you don't want to actually make gathers. You just want to at least help the sleeve to be eased in to the armhole. And this is what it should look like. So once you're done with that, you can set that aside and now you can take out your rib knit. You're going to take your rib knit pieces and stitch the ends of the sleeve band together. I usually do this with a zigzag stitch, obviously not that wide, but just to keep it nice and stretchy so that the stitches don't pop when I pass my hands through it. All right, now you're going to take the sleeve and put it right sides out. And then you're going to fold the sleeve band along the fold line, wrong sides together so that you don't see the raw edges of the seam. Place the sleeve band at the end of the sleeve. Make sure that your seams are matching. When I sew these two pieces together, I also use a zigzag stitch just so it can maintain a stretch. Notice that I have removed the accessory tray of my sewing machine just to make sewing the sleeve band a lot easier. Also notice that I'm sewing a zigzag stitch. Again, this just helps to keep the stretch of the fabric. If you decide to do a straight stitch, just make sure that you're gently pulling on the fabric as you sew so that it just has a little bit of stretch. Once you've stitched the sleeve band to the sleeve, you want to stitch again, but one fourth inch away from the seam allowance. With right sides together, pin the sleeves into the armhole, matching small dot markings at the shoulder seams. Adjust the ease as needed. So once you're done that, you're gonna take it to your sewing machine and you're gonna do a basting stitch around both sleeves and then you're gonna stitch it. After you've stitched it, then you're gonna do another stitch that's one fourth inch away from the seam allowance. So now, if you're pressed for time, you can literally go ahead and wear your jacket where it is. But we're still not done and we're gonna finish this so long. So you're going to want to now add the bias tape to the inner sleeve, but if it's too bulky, you can either trim around it or serge it, which is what I did just to kind of get it down a little bit easier for the bias tape to attach. So now I'm going to add my bias tape.
Now I'm going to stitch my bias tape around the inner sleeve. I'm going to do that for both sleeves. And then at the end, I'm just going to slip stitch the raw edges together. Wow, this looks so good. But last but not least, we're going to apply the grommets to the peplum at the markings. After finishing the garment, my markings aren't as visible, so I just had to go ahead and redo them, which is not a big deal. They're still there. I'm just going to make them a little bit more visible so that I don't um, miss one. So normally there are tools to cut holes in the garment, but this fabric is really thick and it was really difficult to get the cuts in with the tool that they provided. So I just decided to use scissors and that worked perfectly. I just make little cuts, um, just small enough and um, for the grommet to pass through, but not too big so that the whole thing is passing through. We just want just a small portion of it to pass through. So you wanna take the side that looks like a hat and place it on the top of the fabric. Pass it through the hole. Then take the washer with the rounded side up and add it to the other side. There are pliers that you can use for this to um, actually put the grommet pieces together, but I've always used a hammer, so that's what I'm gonna use. You're going to place the front side of the grommet face down on this tunnel shaped base. Then take the install tool and with a good amount of force, you're going to hit the top of the install tool a few times to fully secure the grommet. When using a hammer, it is important to know that you need a very hard surface such as cement to apply it. So now that you're done adding the grommets, you can now add the ties. I use twill tape. And it's usually around, it really depends, but it's usually around a yard and a half long. And of course, that length is going to vary per size. And I like mines to just be enough to make a bow, but if you want something longer, you can certainly cut it a little longer. So now I'm done passing my twill tape ties through my garment and I am done. So now I'm going to make a bow and I'm done. So now you gotta see how I style it. So let's take a look. And that's me wearing ME2004 View A, the jacket. I hope you enjoyed this sew along. Thanks for watching my sew along for View A of my Nomi pattern ME2004. Don't forget to tag me in your makes.